Amen and amen. I do welcome you so much today into uh, this eighth day. We're supposed to have evangelists uh, ministering to us, but he's held up. Uh, uh, he was in a, he had to take some business. And um, when I say business, he had to take his, settle his son back to school. And um, so he's not able to be with us tonight. He's going to be with us tomorrow, God willing, in Jesus' mighty name. Meanwhile, we continue with the sharing. We were at the agents. We said last week that um, we are agents. We are agents of God, agents of God. And for those of you online and you probably just bumped on us, this is Uzima Center, Thikaro Church of Distinction. We are running what we are calling 14 Days of Power. Today is the eighth day. We have a lineup of ministers. And I want to actually appreciate all the ministers who are ministering with us. Some of you are online. Others, I'm, going, I'm sure, are going to be coming online. We've heard Pastor Evans Gishuke, uh, you know, did a fantastic ministry last week. We have heard Evangelist Josphat yesterday and is coming back. We've heard, of course, our very own Pastor Lucy ministering with us. And um, uh, Pastor Titus Keange from uh, Makutano, he was here. And, um, and we still have a couple of more ministers coming in. And we still have more programs. We just began the week. It's just the first day of the week. We have seven days uh, counting today. And we have Bishop James. I talked to him earlier in the day. He's looking forward. Uh, Bishop James is looking forward to be here. And Pastor Maurice Gashero getting ready. And this is going to be a fantastic week in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen, people. Amen. Can I get an amen? amen? Well, Mondays are good days, you know. Some people claim they are blues on Monday. I don't know why. But I don't see you like you drunkards. I don't see you, any one of you drink Mulatina or any one of you look, does uh, Loco Brew or Shanga. So I don't expect you have a hangover because you have not been hanging over to hell. You are looking up. Anybody who have a hangover to hell, you know, a hanging over? Anybody hanging over like they're hanging over to hell because they've been drinking uh, the Loco Blue? None of you. You are children of God. We bless the Lord. Now, let's read um, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter number 6 and verse 1. 2 Corinthians chapter number 6 and verse 1. The Bible says we um, go back to New King James, you know, NIV and me are friends uh, once in a while. Okay. We then, as workers together with him, also plead with you not to receive the grace of God in vain. Can somebody read that verse with me? One, two, and a half, two, go. We then, as workers together with him, also plead with you not to receive the grace of God in vain. I want you to put an emphasis on that bit, not to receive the grace of God in vain. Let's read once again. Uh -huh. We then, as workers together with him, also plead with you not to receive the grace of God in vain. We plead with you not to receive the grace of God in vain. We plead with you not to receive the grace of God in vain. Why? Because the grace of God is never given for fun. The grace of God is never given for beauty. The grace of God is never given as a, a title. It's always given for a function. And Paul is telling the Corinthians, we plead with you. We, we, we implore you. We, 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 we urge you as workers together with him. We are workers together with Christ. And you Corinthians too are workers together with him. In other words, you are called workers or you are joint workers or co-rebras together with him. We beseech you. We beseech you that you do not do what? We beseech you that you do not take the grace of God in vain. Look at Galatians chapter 2 and verse 8 to 9. Let's read a couple of scriptures and then we'll bring in um, a substance therein for the glory of God. Good. Galatians chapter number 2 and verse 8. Now, this is a continuation, but allow me to read from here for today in Jesus' name. For he who worked effectively in Peter for the apostleship to the circumcised also worked effectively in me toward the Gentile. For he that worked, for he who worked effectively in Peter for the apostleship to the circumcised also worked effectively in me toward the Gentile. The next verse says, and when James, Kepha, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that had been given to me, when they perceived, I don't want you to miss that word, when they perceived the grace of God, 
that was, had been given to me, they gave me and Barnabas the right hand of fellowship that we should go to the Gentiles and they to the circumcised. So we go to the Gentiles and they go to the circumcised. Welcome, Pastor, man of God. Help man of God come right in front. It's good to have you. You cannot sit at the back, you can be sure. Uh, uh, Pastor Lord Tanaya, help him to just sit. The black seat right here and good for him. Okay, I appreciate the man of God. I mean, Monday is a day for the men of God to rest and just listen to the spirit and direct translation, listen to themselves. But we appreciate the minister being with us. Now, so let's go back to verse 8. He who, uh, as soon as I notice you, I also recognize you, okay? Let's just agree like that. As soon as I, I, I notice you, I, I will not be intimidated by the fellows online. As soon as I notice you, I recognize you. Like now I recognize uh, Zachary who is going to, will be giving whatever detail very soon. Amen. For he who worked, he who worked effectively. Okay, I also recognize Evangelist Peter. <laughs> For he who worked effectively in Peter, this one. For he who worked effectively in Peter for the apostleship to the circumcised has also worked effectively in me toward the Gentile. Now, two things here. We have a man called Paul writing to Galatians. By the way, Paul is correcting the Galatians because the church in Galatia, Galatia was a nice, powerful church. But they got a crisis because some fellows coming from Jerusalem, they brought in a lot of confusion among them. They brought in, you know, the teaching about that the Gentiles must also be involved in the practices that the Judaism, uh, the, the, the Jews are involved in, what we call Judaism. And, uh, and I don't want to go that direction. But even to our day, the church of Jesus Christ, we still get sometimes infiltrated by all this Judaism, uh, Judaistic, and, um, you know, the Moses kind of a calendar, which is okay. Uh, uh, there are lessons to learn, but you've got to also be balanced. There are lessons to learn, but you also need to be balanced. Like the, the, the Day of Atonement, I think, was it last week or is it ahead of us? I think I saw something to the effect of the Day of Atonement. Is, ahead, is it ahead of us? I'll confirm. The guys in Galatia had gotten into a bit of a mix because some people are teaching there needs to be circumcision, that everyone who is in covenant with God must be circumcised like God demanded to Abraham and the male in his house, they must be circumcised. And so Peter, I mean Paul rather, writes a letter to Galatians and is bringing them back to order. When you do chapter number one, he does quite a number of questions. And one of the questions he asked them is, um, uh, this I want to know from you. Did you receive, um, did you receive faith? Uh, I mean, did you receive the spirit by the hearing of faith or by the works of the law? And, and he says quite a couple of, of things about, uh, you know, he brings them back. He, he is working on bringing them back to order so that their faith is not based on works, but is based on grace. Because salvation is not of works. Salvation is of grace by faith. Are you still here? I'm talking to you as you hear. Uh, faith, salvation is not by works, it's by grace through faith. And, and so he writes to collect them. And in that same book, he, you know, defends his position as an apostle. He defends his position as an apostle and more so an apostle to the Gentiles. Now, who are Gentiles? Because I realize you can preach and make assumption, Pastor Lord. Uh, 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 Gentiles are non-Jews. Everyone whose grandfather, grandmother, and father, mother is not a Jew. You are not born by Abraham and Sarah. You are not born by Manasseh and born by Penina. You are, you are just born by Omondi and then be there. I mean, if you are born by all these non Jews, then you fall in the category of what is called Gentiles, the nations, okay? The Gentiles and the nations. Are we together up to that point? So, now, Peter, Paul is, you know, explaining himself how that the gospel he preaches is not taught by men but is taught by the holy spirit and it also takes time where we are reading now to show how that he came to um, jerusalem by revelation and he came to meet peter and to meet james the brother of our lord and to meet a few other guys we call prominent apostles and to share with them the gospel that he preaches among the gentiles and uh, he is simply telling the Galatians, uh, hey guys, the things I'm telling you are, you know, serious matters. And the things I am writing to you are things that I've learned from God. But he is also justifying his position as an apostle and showing that he also has authority over the church and he has authority among the Gentiles and he has authority because he is in agreement with the apostles of the Lamb, the 12 apostles, Peter, John and James and the rest of the guys. Are you with me to this point? And so 
to that effect he makes this statement that he who works effectively in Peter also works effectively in me. The one who works effectively in Peter for the apostleship to the circumcised, that is the Jews, the one who empowers Peter to minister among the Jews, that same one empowers or worketh effectively in me. He works effectively in me for the apostleship to the Gentiles. In other words, the same spirit working mightily in Peter is the same spirit working mightily in us and is the same spirit working mightily in you this morning, this evening. Somebody shout, yes! yes. Well, would you amplify that for me in Jesus' mind? Let, let's, let's amplify that. You look at it in amplified version. For he who motivated and fitted Peter and worked effectively through him for the mission to the circumcised, motivated and fitted me and worked through me also for the mission to the Gentiles. Put some new life into that and see how it, it looks like. For the same God who works through Peter as the apostle to the Jews also worked through me as the apostle to the Gentiles. So there is something called the working effectively of the Spirit. The Spirit works effectively in Peter. The Spirit works effectively in Paul. And I say to us, the same Spirit seeks to work effectively in your life. If I were you, I would say, Amen. amen. Now let's, let's speak um, let's speak a case study from 1 Samuel 25. First Samuel chapter number 25. First Samuel 25. Here is a beautiful story. I, I do not wish to read all of it. But um, when you get the opportunity, you need to read this and you'll be blessed. Uh, we said we are in First Samuel 25. And um, well, I would want us to read verse 28. But we may have to begin um, uh, verse uh, 23. But the story right here is about David and a woman called Abigail and a man called Nabal. And Nabal was a rich, prominent guy. He had a lot of cattle and all that, and a lot of flock and sheep and what have you. He was a powerful man. And um, because the name of this fellow, <laughs> Old King James used a very difficult word for the, name, the meaning of the name of this fellow. The Old King James used the word Scodrell. This fellow is a Scodrell. I, I don't know what you find in, I don't know what you place that in Swahili. You know, so Scodrell simply means it's a fool. But that is a conch one. I don't think in Mujinga who you. I think at a CKBF, buff. I think who you, sorry. I hope your guys know KBF. Anyway, let, let's first of all preach. <laughs> so, 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 so this man has his um, wealth and influence and riches and his, uh, you know, workers and shepherds will take his animals out there into the field and it happened that they will go into the field where David also camped with this man. Now remember when David ran away from Saul and he went to the cave of Adullam, certain type of men came to David. And the Bible says these were men who were in debt. These were men who were disconnect, uh, discontented. And these were people who were discouraged. In other words, these were fugitives. Swahili were tolo, tolo, were tolo, hawa. They were just fugitives. People who were discouraged, people who were discontented, people who were in debt. You know, people who were bule uh, kabisa, in the words of former president. What were you going to bule do, you know? What were you going to do? What were you going to do? What were you Bule do. But then they heard about David. And they went to the cave of Adullam and found David there. And by the time David was done with them, they became mighty men of David. Because David had a capacity in him to convert useless men to useful people. Why? Because David is from the tribe of Judah, from where comes for the kings and rulers. The tribe of Judah brings for the rulers. You know, uh, the, the old man prophesying to Judah, the old man Jacob prophesying to his son Ju Judah, he says, the scepter shall not leave your house. The scepter or the rod of rulership shall not leave your house. And you see later on Jesus comes in that same tribe of Judah and comes in as a king of kings and the lord of lords. And those who come to Jesus oh, with debts or discontent, discouraged and all that, they don't remain the same hopeless, useless as they were before they came. When they come to Jesus, he raises them to be kings because he is the king of kings himself and he is the lord of lords. Uh -huh. Can I hear an amen from your end? 
And so these shepherds are taking care of the animals and they would bring them uh, out there into the bush and they will come to where David and his team was. And David and his men always took care of them. David and his team always took care of them. I'm beginning to wind up, by the way. David and his team always took care of them. Uh, I feel like preaching right here. Uh, you know, uh, yeah, yeah, you understand what I'm talking about? So, 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 so the men of David uh, always took care of them. The men of David always took care of them. Now, so David, one of the days, he sent some young men to go and tell the, the rich fellow, hey, send us some little provisions. Send us some little provision. And I want you now to see the answer so that we begin reading from there. In Jesus' mighty name. Okay. So, uh -huh. uh, let's just read a few portions and be able to skip. Uh, in my village, we say jump. Uh, so, let's be able to skip. So, now I heard that. Um, okay. So, David sent young men. Verse 5. David sent young men and David said to the young men, Go up to Kamo, go to Nabal, and greet him in my name. Greet him in my name. I need to send you to us or go greet another church in my name. And thus you shall say to him who lives in prosperity. <laughs> oh my good, goodness me. You shall say to him who lives in what? Prosperity. So Nabal is not a poor fellow. It's not a hustler. Nabal is not a hustler. And if he's a hustler, maybe the top hustlers in this country. Okay, let me not say no nothing. But are you in Kenya or you left? You are on your way to heaven by faith. I hope you are not already left the earth. Occupy until he comes. Say to him, peace to you, peace to your house, and peace to all that you have. Now I've heard that you have shearers, you are shepherds, were with us, and we did not hurt them, nor was there anything missing from them. All the while they were in Kamo. Ask you a young man, and they will tell you, therefore, let my men find favor in your eyes, for we, are, um, we have come, for we come on a feast day. Please give whatever comes to your hand to your servants and to your son, David. I mean, David is trying to humble himself the best he can. He can tell. So first of all, he says, these are your servants. And then he says, David is your son. The same way you feel like once in a while you want to call me your son. <laughs> Which is okay, of course, I'm your son. If you're older than me by 20 years, I'm your son. If you are just in third year, surely, am I your son now? Maybe by, I don't know, maybe a service is your son. But I'm your son. Let's, let's continue. So, so anyway, David comes in so much peace. He says, well, um, please give whatever comes to your hand to your servants and to, <laughs> to your son, David. So David. So when David's young men came, uh, they spoke to Nabal according to all these words in the name of David and waited. They spoke and waited. Look at what Nabal does. Then Nabal asked that David's servant and said, who is David? David is in Nani. Unajita, my, my servant said, my son. Who is my son? So who is David? And who is the son of Jesse? So he knows David is son of Jesse. Who is David and who is son of Je Jesse? There are many servants nowadays who break away each one from his master. Continue. Uh -huh. So shall I take my bread and my water and my meat that I have killed for my shearers and give it to men when I do not know where they are from. Sasa yo, sasa atakama niwe unambia mutu hivyo. Let's read, go back. Increase your efficiency. Aha. Uh, so, so, so who is David and who is the son of Jesse? There are many servants nowadays. He's talking about Jesse at he has run away from Saul. And you know David never ran away from Saul because he wanted. He was pushed out. So, so when he begin talking about David running away from Saul at because he is a, he is a rebel, I think you are going too far. Okay, not you. The man is going too far, not you. The man is going too far. And there are many servants nowadays who break away each from his master. And shall I take, uh, shall I then take my bread and my water and my meat that I've killed for my shearers and give it to men who I do not know where they are from? Look at verse 12 before we skip. So David's young men turned on their heels and went back and they came and told him all these words. Yeah, because they came back with nothing, so they had to just say, um, they told David all these, um, all these words. David said to the man, every man guard on his word. Every man guarded on his word. And David also guarded on his word. About 400 men. You know, you think David came with two boys. How many men? About 400 men 
went with David, and 200 stayed with the supplies. Out of the group of 600, he took two-thirds, 400. That tells you Naboth, I mean Nabal, not Naboth, Nabal. That tells you he must have been rich and big and with many servants. Because if David is taking all these kind of fellows, they cannot be coming to fight four or five people. Why would you come with 400 people, men? Are they already? And David ain't no joker. And now one of the young men told Abigail, Nabal's wife, saying, look, David sent messengers from the wilderness to greet our master and revered them. But the men were very good to us and, were not, uh, uh, and we were not hurt, nor did we miss anything as long as we are coming in them when we were in the field. By the way, think about that. That the men of David never hurt these guys, never stole anything, yet they were the useless, the discouraged, the discontented, and the fellows in debt. David installed so much discipline on these men that they never stole anything, even from Nabal. The useless men. They were so disciplined, they didn't steal no, nothing. Are you still here? And they were wont to us both by night and day, all the time we were with them, keeping the sheep. Now therefore, know and consider what you will do. For harm is determined against our master and against all his household, for he is such as Codrell, the one that no one can speak to him. Again, this servant must have been a very bold one. He's telling you, Abigail, this must have been a bold fellow. He says, you know, your husband is a squadrel. Well, I think those days were... <laughs> think about it. Or maybe he wanted to put an emphasis that, hey, sasa tukiweka, tukiweka manas here, <laughs> tutamarizu wapa na manas. Anyway, well, he says... Um, Know what you will do. Know what you do for him is determined against a master and against a household for he's such a scot rather that no one can speak to him. Then Abigail made haste and took 200 loaves of bread. She took how many loaves of bread? 200. She didn't cook. She took. That means these guys used to have a lot of stuff. She took 200. Miangapi, Sombili, Sombex. 200 loaves of bread. Two skins of wine. Five sheep already dressed. Well, and... Uh, Five sears of roasted grain. That sounds like my Indijoma. Uh -huh. And 100 crusters of raisin and 200 cakes of fig, figs. And loaded them on donkeys. And she said to her servant, go on before me. See, I'm coming after you. I want you to go in, in, ahead of me. I'm coming after you. But she did not tell her husband, Nabal, the Scott realm. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was as she rode on the donkey that she went down under cover of the hill. And there were David and his men coming down. To, to, to word her, and she met them. David, she did not go find David preparing. She met them coming down. So, he was correct. David is coming now. With how many men? Talk to me. 400 men. Goodness me. They are coming down. Let's finish. Now, David had said, Surely in vain have I protected all that this fellow. You think you are the only one who uses that word? Eh? Now, <laughs> David, surely, surely um, I have protected all that this fellow has in the wilderness uh, in vain, you know, uh, that nothing was missing and all that belongs to him. And he has uh, repaid me evil. He repaid evil for good. May God do so and more so to the enemies of David if I leave one male of all who belong to him by morning light. Let me be cheeky for a second and show you how it says in Old King James. Just that verse. Actually, okay, read. So, I read like you are serious. So and the Abana. So and more. Okay, let me read for you. So and more also to God. Um, <laughs> do God to my enemies of David if I leave all that uh, pertain to him by the morning light and that. Uh, okay, let's now continue. Oh, okay, right. Okay, let's continue. Now, to me, I want to lakini. Now, when when King Eliza in Achenga. Now, when Abigail saw David, she dismounted quickly from the donkey, fell on her face before David, and bowed down to the ground. So she fell at his feet and said, "On me, my lord, on me. Let this iniquity be. Peace, uh, let uh, and please let your maid servant speak uh, in your ears and hear the words of your maid servant." By the way, um, we're gonna pick one um, matter right here. So follow on. So this is the matter I really want you to follow. Listen to the, listen to the, um, the words of this woman. She says, 
uh, on me, my Lord, on me, let this iniquity be. And please let your maid servant speak in your ears and hear the words of your maid servant. She doesn't say your colleague or friend. Says your maid servant. She also takes a low position. Please let not my Lord regard this quadrille, Nabal. For as his name is, so is he. So, so is he. Nabal is his name. And folly is with him. But I, your maid servant, did not see the young man of my Lord whom you sent. I also wonder why a bright, brilliant girl like this had married Nabal. I also have a beef on that matter. That is for couples meeting. I also wonder why she married this fool. Or maybe she was given over by the father by force, by fire. I don't know. But she says, well, don't, don't worry about my Lord. Don't regard this God real. For as his name is, so is he. Nabal is his name and folly is with him. But I, your maid servant, did not see the young man of my Lord whom you sent. There's a scripture, but unfortunately I know it in my mother tongue. So I, I may have to convert it. He says, Avadari kukutana na mujinga, avadari kukutana na dubu, aliepoteza watoto wake, kuhiko kukutana na mujinga, amebeba ujinga yake. I am telling you. Avadari kukutana na dubu, that is beer. You are better off meeting a bear robbed her cubs than to meet a fellow. Atitikete, ulimuake. Avadari kukutana na, kama kutuma na kutuka na nadufa, iteteshi ya nashi ayo. Can you imagine? You can imagine how bad that thing will be. Well, you remember David killed the lion, the bear? That let a man meet a bear robbed of her cubs rather than a, a fool in his folly. folly. That is a, why don't you give a message of that? Place it in a message form. Hmm? Be, Better to meet a grizzly robbed of a uh, grizzly robbed of our cubs than a fool hell bent on folly. Well, that sounds like we are to not where to look at Rukwa. Chanaima. <laughs> so, so she says, well, forget, I didn't see your servant coming. 26, now therefore, my Lord, as the Lord lives and as you are so good, as the Lord, as your soul lives, now, therefore, my Lord, as the Lord lives and as your soul lives, since the Lord has held you back. This woman is very powerful. She says, since the Lord has held you back. What she is saying is, already the Lord has held you back. She has faith, David will not proceed further. And so she says, since the Lord has held you back from coming to bloodshed and from avenging yourself with your own hand, now then, let your enemies and those who seek harm for my Lord be as Nabal. This girl is brilliant. She is saying the Lord has stopped you from avenging yourself. You don't have to avenge yourself. And let your enemies and those who pursue you. She is talking about Saul. Let them be like Nabal. Even if you are David, you listen. Let's read a bit. And now this present uh, which your maid servant has brought to my Lord. Let it be given to the young men who follow my Lord. You, you need to be wise. This girl is not saying, hey, David, take this. Who told you David is hungry? Let it be given to the young men who follow David. Wisdom is a principal thing, according to Hebrews, not Hebrews, Proverbs chapter number something. It's a principal thing. He, wisdom, I like a friend of mine, uh, um, Clough of Doll, he says, wisdom, wisdom, <laughs> wisdom is a principal thing. Wisdom is a principal thing. You know, that getting get wisdom. The man behind uh, anointing is burr, moving yoke, destroying power of God. The anointing is yoke, uh, burr, moving yoke, destroying power of God. Bad and removing yoke, destroying yoke, destroying power of God. I don't know what I'm talking. We had a Muzungu here one time, and he is doing ministry. He said, Hey, would you add a little bit of Mamoras? And he's not pointing at nothing. He said, Would you add a little bit of Mamoras? So, what are those? Would you add a little bit of my monitors? Would you add a little bit of Mamoras? And if you are blessed, you say, Ate? <laughs> you come from my village. So, so, so she's saying, let, 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 let's give the present which your maid servant has brought to my Lord. Let it be given to the young men who follow my Lord. Please forgive the trespass. Um, please forgive the trespass of your maid servant. For the Lord will certainly make for my Lord an enduring house. I mean, this woman is such a prophetic woman. She is prophesying and telling David, hey, 
Uh, don't, don't avenge yourself. The Lord will, for sure, the Lord will certainly make for my Lord an enduring house. Because my Lord fights the battles of the Lord. And evil is not found in you throughout your days. That was what I was going for. Please forgive if you are made servant for the Lord. Will certainly make for my Lord an enduring house. Because my Lord fights the battles of the Lord. That is critical as we talk about power. My Lord David the king fights the battles of the Lord. He doesn't fight his own personal battles. He fights the battles of the Lord. Okay, let's read, uh, read on and then I'll come back to he fights the battle of the Lord. And evil is not found in him all the days of his life. Let, okay, let's move on. Let's move on. Thank you. Yet a man who has a, a reason to pursue you and seek your life, but the life of my Lord shall be bound in the bundle of the living. Wow. The, the, the life of my Lord will be bound together in the, uh, will be, shall be bound in the bundle of the living with the Lord your God and the lives of your enemies. He shall sling out as with the, 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 the pocket of a, a sling. This woman is brilliant. She knows David has a weapon called a sling. And now she is using that example in a station saying, the Lord and uh, the lives of your enemies, he shall sling out. He shall sling out. The Americans smoked out somebody. Now this one is saying it was sling out, you know, the enemies and uh, from the, uh, the pockets of a sling. Uh, you know, he shall deal with them from the pockets uh, of a sling. And it shall come to pass when the Lord has done for my Lord according to all the good that he has uh, spoken concerning you and has appointed you ruler of Israel. Look at our request. Wonderful God, that this will be no grief to you, no offense of a heart to my Lord, either that you have shed blood without cause or that uh, you have avenged yourself. But the Lord, but when the Lord has dealt well with my Lord, then you shall remember. After Mungu amefanya vitu yote, wewe utakumbuka, utakumbuka. And sure enough, when you read the rest of the story, um, she came back and found Nabal had a huge party. In fact, I read it says he had a party like of kings. He had made a huge party. He was too drunk. The woman couldn't talk to her. So she waited for the next morning when he, the, the man, when <laughs> the wine was down. And when she spoke to him, okay. Now Abigail went uh, to, to Nabal and there he was holding a feast in his house. Where feast, uh, like the feast of a king. And Nabal's head was uh, merry within him for he was very drunk. Therefore she told him nothing. Little nor much until morning light. Look at the next. So it was in the morning when the wine had gone from Nabal and his wife had told him things that his heart died within him and he became like a stone. He became like a stone. He didn't get uh, kidney stones. He got heart stones. Whether there's something like that, doctors will tell me. Then it happened after 10 days, about 10 days, that the Lord struck Nabal and the fellow died. Let's not read the rest. Now, Abigail tells David that you fight the battles of our God. You don't fight your own battles. You fight the battles of the Lord. What are we saying? We say that we're talking about agents of, um, agents of God. And I wanted to show us in a few minutes about uh, effective agent. Effective agent or effectiveness in agency. Being an effective agent agent. Now we say an agent is a representative who acts on behalf of another. When we say you are an agent, you act on behalf of another. Uh, the years of 90s, late 80s and early 90s, you know, Pastor uh, Lucy and Pastor Lord, you, uh, you know, and Pastor Evelyn, you know, that we used to know something called devil agents. Agents of the devil. Devil, 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 <laughs> devil what? Demon, devil agents. Agents of the devil. Uh, and those early years, I'm, I'm saying this because I realize some of the things that we think everybody knows. I find some of us don't have an, an idea. Those days, we are the devil agent, agents of the devil. And by the way, at one point, there was so much devil worship in Kenya. And the president then, Daniel, the, 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 the late uh, Daniel Torichi Moy, set up a commission of inquiry to look into the matter of devil worship in our schools. 
The report is still somewhere. The, our government is powerful. Our government is powerful. They have many reports. And they implement them, including Dongo reports. They still implement them. They implement them, uh, including the BBI. They, they, our government is very uh, good. They implement reports. So anyway, there was a report about devil worship in, uh, in schools. But let me tell you, the solution for devil worship in schools, because they still exist, is not a commission of inquiry. It's the spirit of discernment and the church going right back there and telling the devil you don't belong here. This is where you are going come out and to bring the goodness of Jesus and get children saved and back to God. A commission will do 10, 10 statements of uh, recommendation. But devils don't, rec uh, don't respond to recommendation. Devils respond to power. Demons don't, re don't respond to recommendation by technocrats and some wonderful discussion and some conclusion, a summary paper. Demons don't respond to human you know, authority. They respond to the power of God. You cannot tell demons, I, uh, Professor so-and-so, I tell you to come out in the name of my master's degree in psychology and human understanding and anatomy. Ah, demons don't respond to that kind of wisdom. They respond to the power of God. Ask the Babylonians. They knew that a king could not rule effectively without the astrologers, the, the soothsayers, the diviners, and the witches, and the wizards, and workers of magic. I mean, a king, apart from having the minister of the hell, he had the special programs where they are the soothsayers, they are the magicians, they are the astrologers. And all those guys. And don't be cheated. Even the nice looking, uh, 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 you know, nicely dressed fellows, even in our day, majority still consult those devils and demons. Yeah, in their wonderful suits, in their wonderful, powerful uh, regalia. And they are big cars. They, they still consult. Because the world is not just run by academics. The world is run by the academics, yes. But they are fellows in the spirit realm that don't respond to human knowledge. They respond to power. Somebody say power. power. So, agent is one who works and represents another. And I want to share with us about four things about effective, being an effective agent for God. And then we'll put a pause. Being an effective agent for God. You know, Jesus said when you pray, say, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. That is a wonderful, you know, position. Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. You know, you have a wonderful name. And uh, Psalm 8 verse 1 says, how excellent is your name, O Lord. And it finishes, how excellent is your name, O Lord. And we have songs to that effect. And, um, and, um, and then he says, your kingdom come. You, you know, how excellent is your, I mean, uh, Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Then he says, your kingdom come. Your kingdom come. Now, that kingdom of God coming is not coming just because we pray. We are praying and God uses us and uses a church to enforce that kingdom. Amen. You don't pray and then go and leave and wait for the angels to execute that kingdom. You pray and you walk with God and God uses you and the rest of the church to enforce that kingdom of God on the earth. Are you here? Uh, so your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. Who is on the earth? You and I are the ones on the earth and we are called sons of God. What is a son? A son is one who bears the image of the father. A son is one who carries the authority of the father. And a son is one who does the assignment of the father because the son represents the father. When you have the son, you have the father. When you have the father, you have the Son, are you still here? So when we pray, Your kingdom come and your will be done on earth. How shall the will of God be done on earth? Because God has his agents on the earth. You and I are the representation of God on the earth. You and I are the ones that God is using to do his will on the earth. Let me tell you something wonderful. While God can use angels to do all his work on the earth, he chose to work with men because men are in a better rank spiritually than angels. Are you hearing what I'm saying? God desires to work with men because men bear the very image of God. Angels don't bear the image of God. They are servants. They are ministering servants. But men, you and I, carry the image. We bear the image of God. Nowhere do you see God say, let us make an angel in our image and in our likeness. He say, let us make man in our image and in our likeness. 
when he talks you look about angels and Jesus Hebrews chapter number one he says to whom of the angels has God ever said you are my son and today I've begotten you you know ask of me your nations and I'll give you to none of the angels as he said but when he comes to us it comes to Jesus he says you are thrown oh Lord you are thrown 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 uh, you know all that so so why God uses men is because men have the image and the likeness of God Look at God coming to deliver Israel from Egypt. I love these scriptures, sir. God says to Moses, I've heard the cry that the children of Israel cry because of the oppression of their taskmasters. I have seen the oppression and I am come down. I have heard, I have seen, and I've come down to deliver them. I mean, if you're Moses, you tell him, welcome. I mean, if you're Moses, you say, hey, finally, oh, hallelujah, finally, Jehovah, thank you for coming now. Oh, we're looking to you. And, and the Lord said, I have surely seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt, and I have heard their cry because of their taskmasters, and for I know their sorrows. Look at the next verse. So I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up from the land to a good and large land and the land flowing with milk and honey to the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites who have websites. Now I have come to deliver them. That's what God says. I've come to deliver them. But see the next statement. Now therefore, behold the cry of the children of Israel has come to me and I've also seen the oppression with which the Egyptians oppress them. Look at the next statement. Come now. Therefore, and I will send you. I thought he said I've come to deliver. Now he said I will send you to Pharaoh that you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. I thought God said I've come to get them out. He's saying I've come to get them out, oh, oh, but I'm not going. You, Moses, is the one who is going to tell them to come. You are the one who is going to get them out. I am getting them out through you. When they are finally out of the borders of Egypt, it shall be me and it shall be you. Because I want us to work together. I want us to craft a deal. I want to remain in heaven and I want you to be on the other on, on sight and on ground. Are you together? Are we together, people? But, so I've come to deliver them, but I need you to go and tell Pharaoh. And Moses says, well, I'm not able. God says, I'll send you, I'll give you a man. I'll give you Aaron, he'll be a prophet, he'll be a priest and a prophet. And you will be God, Kayuza. Yeah. Because even when you arrive at Pharaoh's place, he also has magicians and wizards and what have you. So when you appear there and you come single solo, what do you mean? You need to come with a man and your man needs to do something. And by the way, the rod, is Aaron will throw the rod. It will become something. You need to go read your scriptures. So, four things. As we talk about being an effective agent for God. We already read that um, uh, Paul, is, Paul is saying he that worketh effectively in Peter also works effectively in me. We also already said we do not receive the grace of God in vain. We also read, um, or when you read 1 Corinthians 15, 10, Paul says, but by the grace of God I'm what I am, and his grace toward me was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. Now, so how are you going to be an effective minister, an effective agent of God and a carrier of the power of God in our generation and time? Number one, you need to experience the power yourself. You need to experience the power yourself. Joel 2.28, God makes a promise in the last days I'll pour my spirit on our flesh. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. Right from there, you got the young men and the old men. You have dreams and your visions. But then you also add upon the man, man servant and maid servant. You have even the workers. And to them also, I will pour on my spirit in those days. So that the spirit is on men, young and old. It's also on servants, men and female servant. Everybody has the spirit. When you do Acts 1 verse 8, it says, and you shall receive power. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me both, I like O King James, both in Jerusalem and Judea. You shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth. If you're going to be an effective agent of God, you've got to experience the power yourself. You cannot market a product that you don't use. 
You cannot tell us this product is very powerful, but you don't use. I, I, I like story by a friend of ours. Maybe you can place his name. It's a good story. Peterson Rukenya. He gave us a story one time. How a young man walked into his office, dusty, looking, hungry, machetted, looking, worn out and tired. And uh, the young man came to the office because he was selling some materials. And among the materials he was selling is a book. And one of the books was, I think, uh, uh, how to succeed or prosper or being effective or how to make it in life. And he looked at the young man and looked at the book and he thought, I think I recommend you read that book. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? I, I recommend you read that book because if that book has secrets to success. You don't look success. Ask those guys who are selling insurances. They'll tell you all these uh, policies, insurance policies. They'll tell you all these big cars they drive. They don't all of them own those cars by choice. They own them by force. Because how do you tell us you need this and you don't look like you're going, not nothing. How do you walk into my office with dusty shoes and you are hungry and machetted and then you're talking about food reserves and uh, you, are, you can supply for me two rolls of food. Why don't you eat the food first? Am I arrogant? As we talk about the power of God and being an agent of God, you got to experience it first. We don't preach salvation yet. We don't. We are not saved ourselves. Some fellows came to cast out devils and say, "In the name of, of Jesus, who Paul preaches, we command you come out." Demons say, "Wait a minute. Okay, what are your names and what are your names?" They went into the spirit, into the records. Who am I saying, "Manai tuanan"? Checked in the records, no name there. The next fellow, no name there. The next fellow, and then demons said back to them, "Paul, we know." And Jesus we know, but you guys. And the man jumped on them and they left without clothes. The seven sons of Skifa. I mean they left, sorry. They left without clothes. Seven men beaten by one man. It was a karate class. I'm Not karate class. It was a proper karate scene. But can you imagine a man with the Holy Spirit on the other side? One man, Samson, he collects a jawbone from the ground. Not prepared. That's a jawbone. And by one jawbone, he kills a thousand men. And when he's done, he throws away the jawbone. Because I don't need no jawbone. As long as the Spirit is in me, I can still do it again. As we talk about being agents of God's power, you've got to experience it yourself. Experience that power yourself. Experience it yourself. Amen. Jesus is a, the one who resurrects us because he also resurrected himself. If Jesus just kept on telling us, you raise us up and resurrect us, yet he died and was buried and he's forgotten and he is resting in peace, now how would he assure us we will not rest in peace and you will not be, you, I mean, how does he assure? So, so you need to experience the power. And that's why your devotional life, your faith, your personal work with God, commitment with God is critical in these matters of power. We are not just talking about a one-day event. We are talking about a lifestyle, your walk of faith. You need to experience the power of God yourself. Amen. Amen. John says the things we have heard, the things we have seen, and the things we have handled with our hands concerning the word of life. The same we declare to you, that you may have fellowship with us. That is first letter John, first John chapter 1. And he says that he may have fellowship with us. And he says, indeed, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. So we have heard, we have seen, we have handled, we have investigated these matters. Now we are sharing them with you so that you may come to a fellowship with us because you have a fellowship with the Father and his Son. You need to experience the power of God to become an effective agent of that power of God. Number two, you need to know your assignment and your scope. Your scope. You need to know your assignment and know your scope. The power of God is not given for fun. It's given for a work. God does not invest in us for nothing. He invests on us for a purpose. And you've got to know the purpose of God for your life. You've got to know the assignment God has given you. Your assignment and the extent, the scope. Paul says, I don't want to preach where others are preached and labored, but he says, I want to go to regions beyond. And friends of ours have a ministry in Thika called Regions Beyond. Ah, I want to go to regions beyond. And that's in Paul in that particular place. He says that, that as I go to regions beyond, I want to spend and be spent for the gospel. I want to spend and be spent. I want to spend and be spent. So you need to know your assignment. You need to know the product or the service that you are offering. You need to know the product. Do I have marketers here? My best example of marketers are insurance people. Insurance people are good in marketing. I mean, as far as, as when you think about an insurance fellow, what do you call them? A representative or agent or what have you? A huh? marketer. From, from, from their side, they are passionate. From our end, they are nuisance. 
I mean, you tell a fellow you're not available on Monday. He says, so when can you be available? Say, kwenda, kuja Friday. Unajua kwa roho tu muambi, muambia, kuja Friday. Would you kindly let me know what time on Friday? And you say, well, I'm available at 11 p.m. He says, can I call you on Thursday to confirm your availability on Friday 11? <laughs> Finally, like a joke, the fellow calls and he shows up. I begin to tell you, you know, you can get into an accident and you are chopped off your foot. Surely. Did you come to threaten me in my office? Well, let me not speak ill because some of them are here. He anyway, explains all those things. But, but because some of you don't know how to buy, say, okay, I'll think about it. I'll think about it. Ask you, so how long can I give you to think about it? When can I check on you again? And you say, well, you can come next week, but one, because next week I'm not available. Okay. It's okay, sir. Which day? I thought next week, but one is very far. You say Tuesday at four. Say, okay, fine. So can I call you on Monday to confirm that uh, appointment is to you? Unaenda unadika kwa phone number Mary Sumbua. <laughs> and then Monday she calls to confirm our meeting is due tomorrow. And finally after you are fed up, you say, well, I've made up my mind. I'm not buying no nothing. Uh, well, most of the people will not say that. They will use a bit of uh, nice language. Well, I already have all these policies you've been talking about. I've been wanting to hear uh, whether I could consider your organization. Uh, but I'm already, if it's Britain, you say I'm already in uh, zymology. So, um, and so I appreciate your energy and time, all of you. You think the marketer is done with this? So, oh, so, so, could you refer me to some? Could you refer me to some guys I can talk to? I say, well, you can talk to Lord Talaya. He said, could you kindly give me his number? Well, I need to talk to him so that he uh, allows me to give. So, so when can you do that? He said, I'll do that on uh, Monday. Can I remind you on Saturday evening? Can, can you give me another referral? I mean, you want, hey, Kweda. <laughs> <laughs> but, but what we're saying is you need to know your assignment. Uh, and, and these guys are wonderful. They make good money. They are good people. They make good money, you know. You need to know your assignment. You are here to sell. You are not here to impress. You are here to sell. You are not just, you, you don't take a no for a no. You know that no is not an answer. No is an excuse. You press a little bit in. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And that's how we win souls. We don't win souls because people want to be saved. Sometimes we post, push it. I was preaching with a friend of mine called Patrick in a school, wonderful school. And we did an altar call. Patrick was making an altar call. All those who want to get saved, lift your hands and come in front. They came a few. He continued persisting, somebody else. Uh, uh, another one stood up, somebody else, another one, somebody else. And then after several somebody else, nobody. Then he looks at all these people and says, these are not enough. I need more. I'm wondering, so how many people do you want, Patrick? These are not, so he is not taking an offer for an answer. Somebody else. I still remember when preaching in one school. And uh, I had preached, my brother was making, uh, calling people to come to faith. I says, You need uh, to be born again, come. Close your, you know, bow your heads and close your eyes, lift your hand. Nobody is doing nothing. And persistent, you know, you can die, you, know, you can do whatever you lift your hand. Nobody is lifting hand. Oh, I encourage you, my little sister, oh, lift your hand. Nobody is lifting hand. You got angry. He said, Okay, would you look up? Look at me. The one who wants to get saved, stand up. As soon as he said that, a lady just stood up. I say, so why were, were they closing their eyes in the first place? I think you should have begun there. You want to get saved? Stand up. You need to know the assignment and you need to know the scope. The power we're given is not for fun, ladies and gentlemen. We are given power for an assignment. You need to know that. I, I, I will not forget for a long time. I don't promise I will never forget. I may. But we are preaching this particular institution. And uh, I'm trying to, call, call, you know, to get the people follow me, and they are making noise at the back because of numbers. And I'm just thinking to myself, oh, Lord, how do I sort this? How do I sort this? A few are listening, majority are making noise. And our skill, our madini, our maji, kure kanisani. How am I going to sort out these guys? I, I, I say to myself, Holy Spirit, give me understanding. Help me. I say, do you act? You, you know when Moses came to Red Sea, he's the one who told the people, be still and see the salvation of our God. He's the one who told the people, be still and see the salvation of the Egyptians you see today, you see them no more. And then he went back to cry to God. And God is wondering, I thought you have told them, just lift your rod. You, you already told them, you already prophesied to them, you already have the power. The rod is with you, it's not here in heaven, it's with you. Lift the rod and open the nini. Did you hear of the brother who was praying, oh God, give me a wife. He was praying, very seriously, give me a wife. 
I need a wife, oh God. Give me a wife. And I say, my eyes are to you. God said, look down. You can't be up to here. Look down. The man is saying, my eyes are to you. No, no. I'm going to go to the My eyes are on you. Now. So I'm wondering, how do I have this? And, and I felt the Lord say, okay. So I say, okay. God is going to arrest for me all those who are making noise at the back. And he's going. As soon as I said that, they fell. They began to fall everywhere. I'm not talking about born again people. I'm talking about noisy fellows. They began falling. Boop. They're just falling. And, and I knew Mumeshikwa. And uh, at that point, just stand still to wait for the total number to come in. So you need to know the assignment. Experience the power, but you also need to know the assignment. Paul says the grace I was given was not in vain. I labored more than everybody else. He says we beseech you as workers together in Christ. Do not receive the grace of God in vain. The power of God is not for fun. It's given for the assignment. Paul says he that works effectively in Peter for apostleship to the Jews is also working effectively in me for apostleship to the Gentiles. Peter is sent. Actually, Peter is not sent. Peter is going to the Jews because Peter is the first man to get Gentiles come to faith. I don't know. I think his prejudice robbed him of the opportunity to win many more. Huh? Peter, Paul comes in and says, the one who works in Peter also works in me. While Peter is touching and ministering to the Jews, I am ministering to the Gentiles. So I know my assignment is to take the good news to the Gentiles, and I know my area of operation, Gentiles world, is my area of focus. And some of us are focusing on Asia. My wife will tell you, some of us, when they see great things, they want to go tonight. Including last night. And I have good friends who entices me, come now. Come down. So, you got to know the assignment. Number three, not only do you need to know the assignment, you need to be a good distributor. You need to be a good distributor. When you do piping for water, the pipes are not meant to drink water. The pipes are supposed to pass on. Supposed to dispense. You need to be a good distributor. When you are dealing with power, you should have used a better terminology. You need to be a good conductor. When you're dealing with current, whether DC or AC, alternative current, alternating current or direct current, you need to be a good conductor. Some materials are non-conductors. Some others are poor conductors. Some others are good conductors. Whether you are passing on data or you're passing, whatever you're passing, you've got to be a good distributor, good connector, conductor. You need to be a good distributor. I like what Jesus tells the disciples, freely you have received, free to give. If we're going to be effective people, we've got to be a good distributor. You don't collect all the products and store them in your house, like some people do. And collect all the good materials, then put them in the house. We sent a fellow to hang some posters. He collected the posters, hung a quarter, and, and put some other in a, some hole somewhere. Thank God, a drunk, was, a drunk man was, uh, he brought them back. And I don't take your apology, Mr. Jenga. I refuse to take it. Scripture says, uh, bear fruits that are worth your repentance. You need to be a good distributor. The things God has given us are not for keeps. If God has given you grace, for example, to be a giver, because all of us are givers, but some are given grace to give. Huh? Peter writing letter says um, that let everyone use his gift as God has distributed in ministering, in giving, in administration, let everybody use the gift God has given them. You got to be a good one. Don't 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 be. Don't don't don't, don't be. Uh, don't what do what friends of mine say. Don't get all you can and can all you get. There are some people get all they can and can all they get. Get all you can and can all you get. Do you catch it? Especially if you use the word can is in terms of kifuniko. Kenya canas. You remember something called Kenya canas, the money? Get all you can, and then when you get it, put it in a, in a whatever. And uh, God has, as each one of us has received a gift, gift, minister to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God, First Peter 4.10. 
uh, uh, anyone um, who speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God. Those of us who have gifts to speak, that is preach, sing, whatever lead in terms of teach, do so as the oracles of God. Don't teach your own stuff. Don't spend two hours explaining the number of shoes you, you have and where you bought them. I also went to a shop the other day and they, they, they are still selling shoes as if they are stealing to, from us. So even one ministers, even one serves, let him do it with the ability which God supplies. If you are ministering, you are a deacon, you are an usher, you are a security fellow, whatever you, if you are in that area, do by the ability which God gives. That in all things God may be glorified through Jesus to whom belong all the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. So you need to, de don't, don't hold back what God has given you. Freely you have received, free to give. Freely you have received, free to give. How do you become an effective uh, agent of God? We said you need to experience the power. You need to know their assignment and the scope. And thirdly, we said you need to be a good distributor. You need to be a good conductor. You need to be a, a good dispenser. And fourthly and finally, you need to be committed to the sender. You need to be committed to God. You need to be committed. There are many of us who carry treasures and wonderful treasures, but their commitment is lacking. When Jesus came to the temple and found them selling and uh, buying, selling doves, exchanging money, and you need to know the genesis of that business of selling and buying in the temple and exchanging money. People would come to worship in Jerusalem. They'll come to Jerusalem to worship, coming from as far as Ethiopia. They'll come from all kinds of places. And so with time, it became very difficult to come with your animal from Ethiopia, coming to Jerusalem to worship. And so what the guys in Jerusalem, Jerusalem began to do is to provide the animal for the sacrifice so that the worshiper can come and just buy the animal instead of traveling all the way with the animal. Now, if they are coming from all over, including Mesopotamia, then they have a different currency than the one they are using in Jerusalem. And you can talk to Munene, he can tell you the currencies in Jerusalem. Now, so when they come to Jerusalem with their currency from wherever, then they needed to convert their money. So you have the money changer. So the guy selling the animal and the guy exchanging money, they came so close to the place of worship until finally they were inside the temple. And Jesus comes in and finds here there is no worship taking place but business. And Jesus did not lament in a corner. He didn't go in a corner and say, oh God, can we do? Oh God, I wish you could. No, no, he went and he, he, he got himself engaged to make, to make a, a what? Huh? He made a what? Why are you not talking to me? He made a what? A whip, and it's called a jambok by South Africans. He made a jambok. He made a good whip. And he, one man, he whipped them out. One man, one man. Threw the money changers and overturned their doves and whatever. One man, one man. I'm sure Peter... Where Peter was, was just thinking, can I be given a moment to hit one? Huh? Can I be given a moment to hit one? Meanwhile, Jesus is the one walking, whoosh, and uh, he cast them all out of the house. And he says, my house, this house is a house of prayer for all nations. But you know what I like? He says, the zeal of the house of God has consumed me. The zeal, BD. The zeal of the house of God. We are only online, so I don't want to embarrass people of Uzima Center. But you got to be zealous. You guys, you mungu zia kushikiria hivi hivi kushikiria ikiwezekana. Kupiga simu. Peter uko wapi? Nasa kuja otoa ikiti hapa because sasa mimi nimefika. Pastor anachukua kiti anatoa commitment to Christ. Commitment. You need to be committed to these things. We can talk about power, you carry as much power, but if you're not committed, if you're not committed to, before you're committed to church, be committed to God. Be committed to God. Some of us have been given grace to pray, but you've got to knock your blankets out of your way. If Jesus rose from the dead, you can rise from your bed. And a friend of mine called Evans Nyaga, chicken man, he asked, do you wake up to pray or you pray when you wake up? I'm told of this wonderful lady, she had been reading a lot of King James, and she learned she can make abbreviated prayers. So every night she would come and make a prayer, Lord, thy servant sleepeth. And then she would sleep. Early in the morning she would wake up and say, Lord, thy servant waketh. You've got to be committed. The kingdom of God is never run by men or women who are complacent. I think it's Amos chapter number 6, it says, verse 1, who want to you? Who are complacent in Zion. Who, who, give me that Amos chapter 6 verse 1. Woe to you who are at ease in Zion. 
the Kikuyu word there, although this is not Kikuyu church, is very good. The people who are at ease. In the words of Pastor Lucy, we, we, let me give you an illustration and don't throw your stones. We, we were in some place, I won't tell you where. And we found during the day many men and women just idle around. They just idle around. They are basking in the sun. And Pastor Lucy told me, if you want to anikia jua kama mushorogo. Munajua mushorogo? Nelitua jagadhi. Mushorogo. Mushorogo is lizard. Wanaji anikia jua. Wanaji anikia jua. They are warming themselves like lizards. Kiswahili ya waluya ni burukenge. So wanaji anikia jua kama burukenge. Tuko pamoja. These are idlers. Just idle people. They wake up to go nowhere. They wake up and just go sit down and are pushing bottle tops. They call some of the bottle top king. They call other queen. You are the bot. These are bottle tops. The former president said, Munatakwa mushikwe, na muperekwe, na mupigwe. You know, because you are idlers. If we're going to push the agenda of the kingdom of God, you got to be committed in Jesus. Do you want to touch black, white notes, whatever you choose? Uh huh. If, if we're going to be agents of God, you've got to be committed. Amen. You've got to be committed. Look at yourself, and I don't know how you do that, but you've got to be committed. You've got to ask yourself, what am I living for? Paul tells Timothy, no soldier enlisted in battle come engages himself with civilian affairs so that he may please the one who enlisted him for the army. You cannot be a, a, a soldier, yet you are civilian. You cannot be a soldier and a civilian at the same time. You go to the barracks and you see they have their stores there. What you call supermarkets. They are right inside there. So if you need blanket, it's inside there. If you need bread, it's right inside there. If you need blue band, it's right there. If you need Royco, it's already there. If you need what? It's there. You, you don't go out to buy even cigarettes. And I'm not, I'm not a smoker. Neither do I advocate you to smoke. But whatever they need is right in there. So that they stay around. And they are committed to the cause to which they have come to the barrack. They are not there for fun. They are there for their assignment and if we're going to carry the work of God forward if we're going to be effective agents for the kingdom of God you got to be committed rise up to your feet and let's pray for a minute in the name of Jesus Lagadoso konte mandaka suri amnagaya sula mahai bakuza kante lamo mandesaruma kante lamo sonteri na yaya in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ mandando kasula baga as Paul says that he that worketh effectively in Peter also worketh effectively in me saladadadu saria magada like Abigail was said to David that you fight the battles of our God you don't fight battles of, uh, of revenge you don't you you don't have it for yourself. You don't shed innocent blood, David, but you fight the battles of the law. You are the one who you fight a man that defies the armies of the Lord, David. You fight Goliath. You cannot, David, get to Nabal because Nabal is not your battle. Your battle is a battle of the Lord, the battles of kings. And I pray in the name of Jesus that every one of us in this will become an effective agent for God. We will experience a power self. Paul says that I may know him and the power of resurrection that I may be conformed to his suffering that I may also attain to his resurrection. He says that I may know him, that I may know him and be found in him. Having righteousness that is not of my own but the righteousness that is of God. In the name of Jesus I pray Jehovah God that as every one of us in this hour and even those online we will be effective messengers of Christ effective servants of God Isaiah heard the Lord out who shall I send and who shall go for us and Isaiah say here I am send me Lord and Jesus will say I send you when I send you without money when I sent you without pass did you lack anything they said no Lord we didn't lack nothing we didn't lack anything. We didn't lack anything. Lord, I pray that every one of us will be effective agents, carrying the grace of God, carrying the gospel, carrying the power, carrying the healing, carrying the good news uh, to heal the brokenhearted, to preach the gospel of the poor, to free, free the prisoners. Uh, Lando Saria Katola, Sarima Kaya. I pray Jehovah God that commitment will come back to church. Oh God, deliver us from excuses. Deliver us from half-heartedness. Cause us to capture the zeal of the house of the living God. Help us to capture the zeal 
of the house of the living God. Jesus will say the zeal of the house of God consumed me. Zandosa Karando, Zanderina Contaria, Zarimakaya Mosonte, Landagoda Gadia Rosso, Inda Zagadaga, Iriama Cantoria Maza. Wherever we go, wherever we are, we go for the Lord Jesus. Whatever we do, in word or deed, we do it for Jesus. Makorosi Tanda, for we have received freedom, and freedom we give. Mosuria Magada, Jesus will turn us to go to our nations, to go to the world, preach the gospel to every nation as a witness to our nations, and that the end will come. I pray in the name of Jesus, like the Holy Church, wherever they went, they were preaching. When Philip came to Samaria, he preached a word to them. They believed the seeing and hearing of the things that were being done. Makaro Santa, Zangoka Santoria God. I pray our generation will live for the purpose of God. For pain and hope, after you have the purpose of God, after you have served this whole generation, after you have served this generation, according to the will of God, he rested a good as a God. I pray none of us in our generation will live for themselves. We shall live for a higher cause. Linda Kosutaba, Paul says, I consider things done. I consider things lost for the sake of Christ, that I may gain him, that I may gain him, that I may gain him. I consider them lost. I consider them done. Sandes o cantala, zari contari bo sante, zari na kosondi abaka, zandema contosa gadiada. Oh my God, oh my God, zalandosa, landizo kata, zandizo la kata, makasunda yema Oh my Father, da 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 da, masa gada gada gada, masa cantola zaidiya. Hey, shula gada, zarindo, zarindo, zarindo. In the mighty name of the Lord. Ora basara baganda, Hosanna in the highest. Let our King be left. Tera Hosanna. 